Hey there, this is MathCamp321, and in this video, I'm going to show you an example of logarithmic differentiation. So in problem number eight, we're given a function whose derivative could be found by using the quotient rule. But it would be a really messy problem algebraically because while it's a quotient, it also is going to have embedded chain rules involved. So it's possible to do it using older methods, but it would be really, really messy algebraically. So we're going to do this process called logarithmic differentiation in which we take the natural log of both sides to start. Now in earlier courses you learned that if you had an equation that was balanced, as long as you did the same thing to both sides, your equation would still be balanced. You might cube both sides of an equation. You might take the square root of both sides of an equation. And in pre-calculus, you learn that you could take the natural log of both sides of an equation and it'll still be a balanced equation. So to start, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides of this equation. But instead of perceiving this as f of x, I'm going to use y instead. So my first maneuver is going to be to take the natural log of both sides. Now before I go on, I have to warn you, I'm going to suggest that you write a little bit small because it's going to take a lot of space to, to do this problem. Uh, and I also might even need to erase what I'm doing to make this all fit on the same screen. So write, write what you're doing down as I'm doing it and then just be aware that I might be deleting part of it. Well, the next thing that I'm going to do now that I've taken the natural log of both sides is that I'm going to implement the property of logs on the right-hand side and expand this. What we have on the right hand side is the natural log of a quotient. So I'm going to expand using the quotient rule for logs, also keeping in mind that I've got these powers. So I'm really going to be implementing several properties at once. The log of a quotient and also the log of a power. So I'm going to do both of these maneuvers in a single step. Okay, so I've now implemented the property of logs a few, t a few different ways. The next thing that I'm going to do is just travel from term to term and take the derivative of each term, starting with the natural log of y. Well, in this case, the argument y is going to go in the denominator, and its derivative is going to go in the numerator. Now, something that's really important to keep in mind here is that we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So the derivative of y with respect to x would be dy dx, or just y prime. So the left-hand side is now done, so let's travel to the second term. Now, the argument goes in the denominator, and its derivative goes in the numerator. Now let's travel to the third term. The argument goes into the denominator, and its derivative goes into the numerator. Now let's look for opportunities to cancel out. And I notice that there's a 2 here and a 2 here, so they're going to cancel out. So now I'm going to clean this up a little bit further. My first fraction can be consolidated into 2 over x minus 2. And my second fraction be, can, can be consolidated as x over x squared plus 1. Now I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to write the right hand side as a single fraction. Now the denominator of this single fraction would be the product of the two binomials that I have right now, x minus 2 and x squared plus 1. What's missing from this old denominator is the x squared plus 1. And what's missing from this old denominator to look like the new one is the x minus 2. So the new numerator is going to be 2x squared plus 2, and that of course came from distributing over here. And now I'm going to distribute this negative x into x and then minus 2. And I'm going to get negative x squared plus 2x. And I'll do a little bit of a cleanup. And we end up getting x squared plus 2x plus 2. And it's going to be tempting to want to factor that, but the numerator cannot be factored. And my objective here is to find the derivative. I want to find y prime, which means I want to get it by itself. So my next maneuver is going to be to multiply both sides by y. And we're almost done, by the way. 
Now, if possible, we don't want to have a y in our actual derivative. So it just so happens that this y right here, which is just looming about in our derivative, is defined for us right here in the very beginning of the problem. Y is this initially stated problem right here. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. Now it just so happens that we've got some common factors on the top and bottom. We've got 1x minus 2 down here and we've got two of them up here. And then we've got an x squared plus 1 to the 1 half and an x squared plus 1 to the 1 there. So we can do a little bit more cleanup and then we'll be absolutely done with this. So we're going to have an x minus 2 on top, but just one of them because this is going to cancel with this one. I'm going to have an x squared plus 2x plus 2. This guy has gone away. And now I've got two factors which are the same, so I'm going to add their exponents. So I'm going to have x squared plus 1. And I've got 1 half plus 1, which is 1 and a half or 3 halves. So we were able to successfully find the derivative in a single variable x by engaging in this process called logarithmic differentiation. This meant we took the natural log of both sides and used the properties of logs to expand and take the derivatives of these little expressions here rather than the big one right from the beginning. So this is an example of logarithmic differentiation.